Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for TheDailySheeple.com and this is your new shot and by God, it is the last Freaky Friday of 2017. So feel free to join me tonight over at Truth Frequency Radio, that's TFRlive.com, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, midnight in the UK for the last Freaky Friday of the year. It's going to be a good one, folks. And to kick off Freaky Friday, I want to go to sciencenews.org where they have the top 10 stories for science of 2017. It says, in science, progress rarely comes in one big shebang. Well, it has now, two years running, the first ever direct detection of gravitational waves. It says their top story of 2016 launched a long dreamed of a kind uh, of astronomy capable of unlocking otherwise unknowable secrets of the cosmos. And as uh, physics writer Emily Conover puts it, 2017's key event, a never-before-seen neutron star collision that Im Im immediately validated some theories in physics and killed others. And so many new ways to probe cosmic mysteries. I mean, this is huge. We have seen some very, very big breakthroughs in astronomy and physics and genetics. There has been some unbelievable stories and I want to go over those right now very briefly. Top story of 2017, according to Science News, the neutron star collision, a rare and long-awaited astronomical event, united thousands of astronomers in a frenzy of observations. It was the first time they've ever observed a neutron star collision, which, you know, to a lot of people, you could say, wow, science watched grass grow this year, and you'd get the same response. But to astronomers, this was an unbelievable event, a once-in-a-lifetime thing that they were able to capture and get some really interesting data, so very good there. Number two, gene editing in human embryos. Now, this, it's a top story, but I can't necessarily say it's a good thing or a bad thing because could we be looking at Khan, you know, from Star Trek? Think about that. Ah, oh, my genetically engineered intellect. Urgh. I mean, that could very well be a problem here soon. You know, you also have... People like Elon Musk um, and Dr. Craig Venter, if you don't know who that is, you got to check him out. He's a really, really big in uh, genetic research and this um, and the human uh, basically manipulating and cloning the human. Um, but he's even gone as far as to say, why are we worried about? Astronauts going to Mars and getting radiation poisoning. Why don't we just now start the process of genetically engineering and editing this generation of astronauts and we'll just splice in some fly DNA with them and make them radiation resistant so they don't need to worry about radiation. How about we do that? And he's actually talking about, and there's actually a lot of movement to actually engineer astronauts for these missions. Some people would say, wow, that's a great idea. Others would say it's kind of dangerous. That leads down a slippery slope. May start there, but where does it end? Bad things when you start to play God. Number three says Larson C. Ice Shelf. One of the biggest icebergs to break off of Antarctica uh, happened this year, created quite a hullabaloo. But unfortunately, you know, all these climate alarmists and everything else, we're not dealing with global warming as they try to sell it. We're dealing with cyclical things, cosmic events that are wreaking havoc on our planet and will continue to do so in 2018 and will probably be front and center in the top stories of science going forward. But it certainly did cause a lot of ruckus when that Ice shelf broke off. Now, this is a very interesting thing that I don't know what to, well, you know. They said we have now seven new neighbor planets. This is very interesting. The possibility of life-friendly family of worlds orbiting what they say TRAPPIST-1 fuels a debate about what makes a habitable planet. 
you know, we look at things from our life experience, from humanity standpoint, which says, well, we got to look for water because water is the basis of life. No, water is the basis for human life. Water is the basis for life on earth. What if, and I know this sounds kind of crazy, but what if life existed in other forms? Hmm, what if life existed that perhaps was silicon-based? It's happened before. Death Valley, there's silicon-based life forms. Um, how about ethereal beings? How about that? Ones that may not have a physical form or exist in the dimensions that we can interpret. You know, think about it. We can only see 5% of the, of the, the light spectrum. 5%. What else is out there in the other 95? So I think science has tunnel vision when it comes to looking for what it considers habitable planets. It may not be habitable, habitable to humans, but it may be habitable to other things, other life forms. Number six, I think this should be number one. Quantum communication. This is an unbelievable jump i mean think about this for the last 100 years we've utilized rf radio frequency to um communicate and we'll continue to do so but quantum communication changes the game because now you deal with entangled photons and you're talking about light basically so you're Communicating instantly. Remember that these photons, these entangled photons, when you change the state of one, it doesn't matter where the other photon is, whether it's on the other side of the universe. If you change the state of one, the other one instantly changes state as well. So you're talking about, let's just say you want to explore space. You could communicate with that satellite instantly. No longer do you have to wait weeks or months to get pictures back, right? Now, you deal with quantum communications. You deal with entangled particles. And that is just an unbelievable breakthrough. You want to talk about something that will advance humanity in a, in a, a scientific, maybe a positive way. That is definitely one aspect. Of course, it could be used for negative things. Don't get me wrong. But quantum communication, revolutionary Quantum encryption, unbelievably, it's unbreakable. So now we have that that we've discovered. I mean, I, I can't believe how fast science is coming around. Number seven, nutrition and climate change. Now, I will say, yes, the climate is, trained, is changing. But so is the earth. So is the environment that the earth is in. Everything's changing. You go and look at Mars, you look at Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, Mercury, all our planets. Guess what? They're changing. The sun is changing. Everything is changing. Also nutrition. More people are going hungry than ever before. Three and a half billion people on this earth are considered starving. In this day and age, it shouldn't happen. I know a lot of people say, well, you got what's going for you if you live in a desert. Well, that's about the most, the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Humanity or humans deserve to live if they're here. You know what? And we should all work together to achieve that. And I take a look at things like the Vatican that, sits on wealth beyond imagination and has unbelievable resources at its disposal and basically has facilities all over the world in every damn country. And the Pope on Christmas Eve two years ago, right? He gets into, becomes a, the Pope. And what does he do on Christmas Eve? He hands out two dozen sleeping bags to the, to the homeless. To me, that's an outrage, an insult. Here you're sitting on riches beyond anybody's imagination and 
those are more important to you to hold on to than to convert that into perhaps putting up those billboards that pull water out of the atmosphere, that basically dehumidify, putting those in places where people are lacking water, or putting together food programs, teaching people how to grow food, teaching people how to terraform in places where they may not want to move, but you can adapt the environment to start growing different things. See, it's funny because I think about the old adage, and excuse me if I, if I uh, say it wrong, but you give a man a fish and he gets to eat for a day. You teach a man a fish and he eats for life. We need to teach people how to grow food and how to be independent. And if we can do that, you're going to have a lot less hungry people in the world. And believe it or not, it doesn't take that many resources. So you could still have all your gold and your scarlet robes and your opulence, Pope. But how about you open up the coffers a little bit and start doing the right thing? You know, uh, the arrogant title of the Pope is Vicar of Christ or the placeholder of Christ on earth, which is, I mean, absolutely, it's a, it, uh, to me, it flies in the face of everything that God and Jesus represent, especially when you look at how the Catholic Church has acted. But if you are that, then shouldn't you then follow the footsteps of Jesus? And if that's the case, why aren't you feeding the poor? Why aren't you feeding the hungry? Why aren't you going in there? Oh, but we do. We have soup kitchens and everything else. No, no. Put those billions upon billions of dollars. Now, look at look at the um, look at the Vatican. Look at some of the the halls in the Vatican that are just pounds and hundreds and thousands of pounds of gold and everything else. Sell it. Tear it down. Feed people. Well, you can't do that. Why not? I mean, it's unbelievable. Here we are in 2017. We can't do that. That's a, it's, it's crazy. Number eight, car T cell therapy. This is some cutting edge therapy where they're basically taking stem cells and turning them into uh, different cells to fight leukemia and lymphoma and has shown some great promise um, in initial testing on humans. So we'll have to pay attention to that for sure. Uh, number nine, football players' brains. I don't even know why this cracked the top 10 list. It's quite simple. If you choose to partake in a gladiator sport, you're going to get hurt. So I don't know why everybody's so surprised that when you constantly get your head caved in, that you're going to have brain damage. I mean, to me, that's kind of like one plus one is two. Uh, whatever. Number nine. And finally, number 10, Zika virus subsides. Ah, yes. That pesky Zika virus owned by the Rockefeller family has seemingly calmed down and, um, and run its course. So who knows in 2018 what the next big scare will be. But those, my friends, were the top 10 stories in science in 2017. And I'm sure that you just feel so gratified and so happy about those rankings. I know I don't. I could think of many other things that rank in my top 10, but we'll be going over that, my friends, tonight. 7 p.m. Eastern, tfrlive.com. Join my, uh, me, Kev Baker, Scotty Lopez, change the channel, Johnny Whistles, and who knows who else is going to join this happy action fun time. And you can join us as well. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's News Shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.